this was just a real thin uh, window cylinder. It was like the thickness you can see here. It was just uh, fabric and, c and cement wrapped around a barrel, basically. And that's a lot quicker than trying to do a 3D form and pouring it and filling it and carrying in a big heavy thing and setting it in and stuff. Um, but then we don't want to just show it thin because we want to give it the thickness of feeling like it's consistent with the whole dome. So I just cut some, some wood spacers and some of this thin plywood and wrapped it around. It was a little bit tricky because cutting this plywood we have the back dome which is on an angle and curved and then the front surface is curved and so to get that plywood to fit with both curves well, it's kind of interesting, but then we found out it's kind of actually nice to have a little space behind it because you can stuff it in from the back and it also gives this, this radius we put on something to hold on to with the, the, the space between the plywood and the dome. And we decided to go on a little bit of an overhang um, because that way water dripping isn't going to hit here as likely. Went through different renditions. It was going to be like straight and then in. But that wasn't that wasn't drastic enough. It just looked like a, a mistake with a little elbow here, so we kind of smoothed that down. And um, next, we're gonna put the fabric and cement all around it and make it a little bit thicker on the inside. And then I'll cut the wood window. That's how I'm getting the angles from for this oh, trapezi, like a trapezi. What to call that? Yeah. So I'm measuring then. Oh, actually, I'm the right one. Here, then I got to type it on in, in the piece of wood and then cut it in the machine. This is a piece of the one side of the window frame, so I'm just trying to cut. Um, we've cut one angle here, and now I'm going to try and match the saw to this angle here. <laughs> um, Precise, like I can take a top measurement and a bottom measurement to see how on target. Trim that one there. This line looks really nice right there. Okay. So you can either trim this one or this one. You know, G, right? which I would maybe do like this, and at this point we can kind of do like what Joseph was saying, yeah. where if we lay this on like this, mm -hmm. like because we want this to line up yeah. with that, obviously. So we find the angle that most closely resembles, which this angle seems better than this angle. See how this one kicks yeah. it way that way. Mm -hmm. So if we come off of here, and then you trace that. Uh -huh. That line right there. Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I put this on top to trace. No, it? no. Just the way it is right now. Just put your finger there and okay. put your finger on F so it does not move. Yep. And then go ahead and trace. Oh, so we're gonna cut F, not yeah. G. Okay, got it. Okay. Unless you don't want to. No, it's fine. Just to nibble up to our line to make it a little tighter joint as we're making our way around the. Uh, elliptical octagon <laughs> again like because we're still cutting into this ellipt you yeah. know to yeah. have our round-ish window mm -hmm. frame like it doesn't really like this line doesn't really have to line up mm -hmm. exactly there because mm -hmm. you're not this joint doesn't line up with that joint anyway right, right. so it's not like it's a it's something that your eyes are going to be like that doesn't look right mm -hmm. you know when it nibbles into the wood mm -hmm. so just kind of like snug up on the line and like here, if you look, like this is definitely beveled that way. Like, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. So then as you're creeping up on it, you don't want to be cutting into this line up here. You just want to be watching where the blade's making contact with the wood. Having a line up here. This is where it's becoming more important to like really make sure you're perpendicular to your finished surface because like you don't want it to be like this because then you're undercutting it. It's like everything has its... Yeah. No, that's okay. gorgeous. All right. And that's, I think, part of what's going to make 
honestly, the irregularities are nice because yeah. I think they blend in more with sure. the whole feel of the thing. Sure. To give you guys an opportunity to use it, I'm just going to hit this yeah. area right here right quick to... around the outside edge okay. Okay. that visually covers that and that's where the gasket's going to be okay. for the gasket seal and at this point in time you could take as long as you want to like really make oh, it as perfect you try it the can. other way just flipping it yeah like we can see how it's in here and we need we can tell where it's touching up here yeah so and that's what we want because we want to smooth that to a uh, we want that surface to be as perpendicular as we can with this, or as like parallel and flush to it, because that's where our hinge is going to go. And the hinge needs to be flat to work right. right? So we'll just start to sand this top edge out to be that. That's what we need to do is uh, that bevel square we used yesterday. We can uh, record what that angle is, and then we can transfer that to here so we know where to sand was this way yeah. right because yeah, we need to re we need to remove this material so that's another thing we can write right now is just out and okay. then in and this line out. was north when you were setting there. Up. so we know that we want this outer edge uh -huh. to be like oh, yeah. that like that right uh -huh. but obviously we can't do that right which I guess we could uh had a straight piece of wood just a little scrap piece of wood See that other line there? See how I didn't get a good bend there because this is a nice, like, thin, and this has sort of like a more straight line. Yep. So, so you gotta do it again. Do it again? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's just to there. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of our. Okay. Pretty Let's much see how ideal. That's, that doesn't really have a curve in it. I don't know how that. It's, it's an illusion. Don't worry. Okay. It was. Beagle <laughs> head. That? The bugle head. Bugle head? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On my left. Yeah. And then over here, we know that it's like from here to, let's say about here. But this material, we want to focus removing on the other side. So it's yeah. not touching maybe right like, here. Maybe like here as well? That, yeah, like kind of right. You can see that's going to be touching in a little bit. So I can do like here and here, okay. and maybe for these marks I'll do an eye for inside. inside. Okay. This one is an outside, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think those are the big places it's touching right now. Yeah. This we want to kind of leave the way it is because that's our joint. That's where we want that to be made it as best as possible for this inorganic, like rigid, straight thing. Yeah. Right? And then there's going to be a lip around the whole thing out here. When and then, exactly. Okay. Once we set it in, yeah. then they'll be able to mortar a custom. So it can even fill in like the gaps around here. Yeah. It doesn't really matter that this isn't because yeah, it's okay. that is your visual reference. Yeah. We only want this to look nice and not jankety for when the windows open. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That we want to be a nice smooth shape. Yeah. We're, it's not much. We're just like nothing at this point to get between here and here. Oh, which this this is on this edge. We yeah. gotta transfer the measurements over here and everything anyway. Yeah. That's why I was it'll be easier to work flat instead of holding it. <laughs> So part of the finishing of the round window is um, that they made this gasket lip here. You'll see it um, from the inside as well. But um, what they did was they wrapped the window in plastic and tape and then mounted it, um, installed this hinge and put it up in here. And then they took the stucco and they um, created this, pressed it hard into the window and made this gasket. And um, that made it perfect for the size. There's a little bit of cracking up in here, which we're, we're gonna have to 
um, redo um, a little bit of more finishing. And then um, Joseph made this metal um, gasket right here for a screen. And the gasket will slide out, you wrap screen around it, you push it back in, and then you'll cut it with a razor blade or an exacto knife. Um, and that will still be removable, but it'll be, it's tight enough and it's sprung. So it's um, held in there um, by the um, tension of the metal. Okay, so once this was installed with the same dowel method that they talked about um, in with the closet, um, which is drilling a hole, putting a wood dowel up in there that's really tight fit, and then screwing the screws in to install that. Then they were able to um, install this, um, and this is all wrapped in plastic, plastic again. Um, so they put it in there, and then from the outside, they create that gasket. Um, then it's, it was taken out, and um, we, we took all the plastic off of it. We um, polyurethaned the, all the wood and gave it to a glass guy who then um, cut the glass to be the size, obviously just a little bit less, larger because the design of the window is that you take out these screws and there's actually two pieces of wood here and they come apart and then the glass lays inside of it and then you screw it back down and you've got a solid, strong window. Um, the last piece of finishing for the window was to put silicone on the exterior of the window. So we sealed it um, like this um, to make sure that, you know, no uh, water gets in. Um, in addition, once we tried to put it back in there, um, it was it was too tight. It wouldn't actually you couldn't actually push it in. Um, so I went ahead and um, just gently used a chisel and a hammer and just chiseled away. I would hold this up like this, and then I would see where it was holding because it was you couldn't see the light there, and I would just mark it and then take it down and then just chisel it until I got just the, the perfect fit. You know, we smoothed it out. It had some holes in here that we filled and smoothed it out a little bit. Um, but it's pretty much ready to go up. You can always continue to try to get it just the way you want it as you go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and... Um. So the last piece is that we're gonna be able to open the window and let it um, be open like this. So we're going to, we have a, a chain um, with a hook that we'll put up there and hang it and so that it's the right length to um, however, like that's probably right about there actually. Um, so that we have an operable window. Voilà. <laughs>